Well, g'day guys, here it is, our 76 series Land Cruiser that we've waited almost two years for. We're on our way up to Queensland to start the exciting modification process. But before we do that, we thought we'd better do a run through with you guys and let you know everything that we've got planned for the 76. If you missed our last video on the 76, we went through why we got rid of the Ranger, why we didn't upgrade that, why we chose a 76 and all the other vehicles that we considered. Why didn't we get a 79 or a Ram or a big NPS truck? All of that was covered in the last video. So if you missed that, jump up here and I'll leave a link in the description description below as well so you can go and check that one out. So in this video we're going to be just doing a full rundown. She's still bog stock standard at the moment. It's not even registered yet. As I said we're on our way to Queensland to start that process. So let's dive in. Let's have a run through of everything we're going to be doing to the cruiser and how it's going to help the vehicle to perform those roles that we identified in that last video. And don't forget a quick one as well if you haven't heard already we are hosting the Pioneer Party. It is going to be our first ever meet and greet group meet, meet up where we're going to be going camping at Burham Shores Campground up there just north of Harvey Bay on the Queensland coast. It is one of our favourite campgrounds in the entire country and we're inviting you to come and join us for a weekend of fun, laughs, beers, campfires, food and everything else in between. So the Pioneer Party is going to be from the 13th to the 15th of October and we're going to have our caravan there obviously but we're also going to have the 76 on display with a heap of these mods that we're about to go through. Already done, you get to see it first before it goes live on YouTube uh, in person up there at Burham. If you haven't booked already, Hit the link in the description below, jump over and book your site and join us there at Barham. We hope to see you there. Rightio, kicking things off up the front here, uh, the old front bump bumper. Obviously, this is going to go. Uh, we do have a ATD Customs bull bar already custom made that we are actually going to get fitted in the next couple of days. We've painted that in a beautiful custom colour. Um, we can't wait to show you that. I think it's going to go really well with this sandy top, which we love just quietly. I know it's a bit of a polarising colour. Some people love it, some people hate it, but we absolutely love it. We did have to be a little bit careful with these newer Land Cruisers, these newer 70 series. They do have a, a radar camera mounted into the front badge here so we had to make sure that the bull bar complied with that. Now I wouldn't say a bull bar is absolutely necessary to have as you tour around the country but it is a really nice piece of insurance just against animal strikes and things like that and it does give you that place obviously to mount lights and winches and things like that which we'll be doing in the future as well. The lights we will be fitting to the bull bar are an, a relatively new product to Australia. Uh, we're really excited to showcase them. Um, we can't tell you a little bit too much about it just yet because they haven't been announced just yet but yeah really excited to show you these awesome new lights that we're going to be fitting up to the to that ATD bull bar as well. While well, function is the primary reason to fit a bull bar to protect the front of the vehicle, it is also a big aesthetic decision because for us, we really think no other accessory that you fit to your car defines the look of the vehicle more. So we spent a long time deciding what bar to fit to this one, um, and we really think the ATD bar is gonna just set the tone for the vehicle and set it off absolutely perfectly. Now, speaking of that sandy top paintwork, we do wanna make sure that paintwork stays protected uh, and stays looking as good as it does now uh, into the future. And especially when we consider the tracks that we're gonna be doing and what we're gonna be doing this, with this vehicle, um, PPF, a clear wrap, over the vehicle was the way we decided to go with it. So we will be doing a full PPF wrap over the vehicle. It's a clear wrap. It's the same as what we use uh, on the caravan windows, our PPF kits that we do for caravans um, over the entire vehicle to protect that paintwork uh, for years to come. In under the bonnet, uh, that big V8 engine, one of the big reasons we bought the vehicle, that's gonna be staying pretty well standard for now, but we, we wanna maintain the reliability, uh, but we will be putting a uh, secondary fuel filter on there as well as a catch can and a couple of other small little things just to improve uh, the reliability of the engine and to ensure that it keeps serving us well uh, into the future. All right, moving down the side, the Land Cruiser 70 Series do come with this standard raised air intake, and it really is just that, a raised air intake, not actually a snorkel. This thing isn't waterproof. Um, some people do waterproof them, but we decided we're going to take this one off and fit a Safari Armax snorkel. Uh, not only does that give us full watertight uh, intake for the air for the engine, but also uh, a bigger intake. It, it increases it to a four-inch intake, so make sure plenty of air gets into that big V8. Flares here, we're going to be repainting these. Uh, we're not a fan of the silver colour and it doesn't go with our colour scheme, so they'll, they'll get pulled off and they'll get repainted. Uh, wheels and tyres, we're going to be putting method wheels on this, which we're really excited about. We saw the method wheels uh, at the Melbourne four-wheel drive show relatively recently and absolutely fell in love with them. So an awesome set of uh, method wheels going on there and they're going to be wrapped in a Toyo uh, all-terrain tyre, so looking forward to that. 
Tire size we're going to stick to is the 33 inch, around the 33 inch, um, just just somewhere in between uh, off-road performance and just day-to-day -day use. We don't. I'd love to go to 35s, but when you go back to those roles that we want the vehicle to to perform, it also needs to be a great towing vehicle and a great daily driver. So I think the 33 inch, around that sort of size, uh, just fits into that perfectly. It gives us a bit of the best of both worlds. Um, I think I think the 33s are fine, and for everyone that we've spoken to that has one of these. Um, 76 series, they reckon 33 is about the sweet spot. So that's what we're gonna run with. All right, now when it comes to suspension, we will be pulling out the factory suspension and doing a full suspension upgrade to this, but we're going even further than that. Uh, yes, we are doing a GVM GCM upgrade. Uh, we went, we tried everything as far as suspension was concerned and upgrades, we went, back and forth a million times and just looked at everything that was on the market and just kept coming back to the J-Max kits. Yes, this vehicle is gonna be running on a full coil rear setup, uh, a full coil replacement in the rear end. It's a full J-Max kit. It's an insane kit. It's an eye-watering amount of money, but it will give us a huge increase in GVM, a huge increase in GCM to be able to tow our van and just future plan uh, to be able to do a lot of things with the vehicle into the, into the future for years to come but it includes a whole lot more than just a suspension kit. Uh, on top of the suspension, it gives us a full diff replacement. So it widens that rear diff that these 70 series have, the narrower rear diff, um, which just affects towing performance and full drive performance. So we'll get the full replacement rear diff. It'll also include airbags, an airbag system in the rear suspension, uh, which is great for when we uh, ver have varying loads. So obviously when we've got the caravan hooked up or when we're unhitched, uh, and it also includes a, a torquid exhaust, a three and a half inch exhaust all the way through. Uh, and it also includes a brake upgrade. So we get the improved uh, braking performance through an upgraded brake booster and upgraded brake lines and all that sort of thing. So it really is, although it's a lot of money, um, and we're not sponsored. We've got no association with J-Max. We did pay full price for it. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a scary amount of money, but it is a full package that we just felt comfortable, uh, especially doing it pre-rego, that it was going to be the best package for what we wanted to do the, for the vehicle. Uh, it was going to improve that full drivability. It's going to improve our towing performance massively. It's going to improve the ride and comfort uh, and, yeah, and improve the safety as well with that brake upgrade. So... Although like, I keep coming back to how much money it is because I just want to I want to stress that this was not an easy decision. It's almost $40,000 for that upgrade. Um, so yes, an, a staggering amount of money, but uh, we just felt that it was gonna give us the best solution. Um, and we just kept coming back to it. We tried to find uh, lower cost alternatives and they just weren't gonna stack up to be able to do what we wanted to do with the vehicle. The Tricky consideration for this upgrade was that it was the thing we had to get done pre-rego. We really wanted to take advantage of being able to get it done before its first registration, which means that then that upgrade is federally compliant. So it's a compliant in every state and territory in Australia, no matter where we end up living or wanting to register the vehicle and for resale as well, uh, if we ever do sell the vehicle for whoever buys it next. We'll go into a lot more detail about the J-Max kit and why we chose it and what it's gonna allow us to do and what we compared it to uh, in future videos when we go through that kit. But we just want to let you know because we're really excited about that, um, about that kit that we're gonna be fitting into the car. Moving down the side, uh, the, these little wing mirrors, as much as I love these old sort of retro looking wing mirrors, uh, obviously they're not suitable for towing so we, we will be replacing those we're gonna go with the MSA mirrors this time uh, we've had the clear views before they're not too bad they sort of did the job but I wasn't that thrilled by them and we've heard really good things about the MSA ones uh, we also had a look at them at the Melbourne 4x4 show as well and just decided yep let's give them a crack um, something a bit different so there'll be a full set of uh, MSA mirrors going on there side steps and these ones they don't look great and they don't really do much other than make it easy to get into the vehicle and maybe stop some rock spray but uh, they will get upgraded eventually we'll come back to the interior in a minute we'll keep working our way down the side let's go up to the rear and have a look up there and see uh what upgrades we're going to be making to the back end oh before we go to the back fuel uh, 130 litre tank standard in these 76s we are going to be changing that out to a long ranger tank um to which gives us 180 litres and long range also do or long ranger i should say also do a 40 litre water tank so we're looking at putting that underneath there as well which we're really excited about having a bit of water on board 
All right, moving to the rear end, it's a really common thing with wagons to take off this rear bar and fit an aftermarket rear bar with swingaways and things like that. Um, as much as I love the look of them, they are quite heavy and they are really quite expensive. So for now, we're not gonna worry about a rear bar. I don't think we really need it. As I said, we're gonna be doing that long range of tank underneath for water and we're gonna have the extra fuel range in the long range tank. So we don't, at this stage, need to be able to carry jerry cans uh, and we're only gonna be carrying the one spare tire. What we are gonna do instead is look at painting this rear bar just to make it a little bit uh, nicer looking. I'm not a real fan of the look of them and I hate chrome. We will obviously be fitting a tow bar to the vehicle though. Uh, bit hard to tow the caravan without a tow bar. So there's a tow bar going on that very shortly as well. Uh, in the rear end, we're gonna be doing a completely custom, uh, one of a kind storage system. Uh, something that you probably haven't seen much on the market or at all before. Uh, it's completely designed by us. We've had almost two years to plan this vehicle out. We're gonna turn this thing into a four person camper for us and the two kids. Uh, two will sleep inside and two up on top eventually in a rooftop tent is the plan at this stage. So the big thing for us with the rear storage system is it's got to be able to perform a number of roles that we want the vehicle to perform. When we've got this set up to tow the caravan, what we need out of the rear storage is very different to what we need when we're camping out of it and when we're uh, on a four wheel drive day trip around, away from the caravan. Uh, and we also need it to be flexible just for a daily driver. When we go down to the shops and to the supermarket to get groceries and things like that, especially when we're camping out of town, you need room to be able to put that in here. So we're not going to be filling this thing chocker block with drawers and storage and everything like that. It needs to be a flexible uh, storage solution that it allows the vehicle to perform those many roles that we want it to perform. It'll have a charging station for camera gear, easy access to the things we need easy access to and quick access to. We'll go through it in a lot more detail when we get to that stage of the build. Yeah, we'd love to know your thoughts on it when we get to that point. So really excited to show you what we've got planned for there and I think it's gonna be very different to anything else you've seen on the market. All right, inside this beautiful retro interior in the 70 series. Uh, a lot of people, this turns them off. For us, it actually turned us on slightly. I love the old retro look. I love that it's basic. I love that it's simple. Like the entire vehicle, it just leaves uh, the opportunity there for completely customizing the vehicle and really personalizing it to be exactly what we want. And that was something that we really wanted to have out of a vehicle. A lot of modern vehicles these days, there's not, not a lot you can do with the interiors because they're pretty well set as they are. Um, and apart from a few little uh, modifications, you can't do a lot. So what are we gonna be doing in here? So first things first, uh, these 70 series are notorious for being a pretty noisy cabin and a noisy ride and already uh, sitting on the freeway and the highway heading up this way at 110 k's an hour, I can say, it needs some improvement. So we are gonna be stripping the interior and fitting a car builder's um, stage four sound deadening and insulation package, which will do the roof, the doors, the floor, uh, to give us better sound insulation for road noise, which is gonna make filming for a start a lot easier to, so you guys can hear what we're saying when we're filming our videos, uh, but also just general day to day, uh, the noise is a little bit uh, intense when you're sitting on the highway for a while. It also gives us better heat insulation as well. So we're looking forward to doing that. That's gonna be a DIY project I'm gonna do. So fingers crossed we get that one nailed. Uh, seats, these beautiful seats, uh, no, they're not that comfy, uh, but they're not too bad. I, I gotta say, they're not as bad as I thought they were gonna be from what everyone says. So for now, we're just gonna wrap these in a new set of black duck seat covers, uh, those same four elements ones that we had in our uh, old Ranger. This will actually be our fourth set of black duck seat covers. Uh, we've had two sets of their canvas ones, and this will be our second set, as I said, of their four elements ones. Uh, where We swear by them, so that was one of the first things we ordered for the car was the black duck seat covers. If you've got kids, uh, uh, you'll understand why seat covers are imperative and a full set of them. So looking forward to getting those on. Uh, that'll be one of the first mods we do to the car, actually. One of the great things about 70 Series is there is every single accessory modification under the sun just about that you can think of, uh, including a variety of consoles and improvements and upgrades to the interior. We're actually really happy at this stage with just the standard center console and interior. That's gonna stay standard, but we are gonna be putting a new roof console through. Really awesome console we found from the guys at Legend X. They're doing this molly range of uh, uh, products for 70 series and they do this molly uh, sort of aluminium really sort of military rugged looking uh, roof console something a little bit different to what's out there on the market so we're excited to put one of those in uh, and try that out and they've got a heap of other molly products we're going to be using through the rear end fit out as well 
when it comes to entertainment and uh, tech, uh, that those are two words that don't go with 70 series. But we are going to be making a minor upgrade, uh, probably not in the first round of upgrades, but we will be uh, upgrading the head unit there. We want to have something up there in the in the dash that handles our off-road mapping as well as uh, a little bit more intuitive to use. Uh, be good to have Google Maps integrated, Android Auto, all that sort of stuff. So that'll be an upgrade. Let us know if you're a 70 series owner, if you've got any experience with upgrades there. I know about the Alpine unit, a lot of people recommend them, but yeah, if you've got any recommendations for a head unit there, let us know in the comments below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Apart from that, the, the interior will be pretty well left alone. Uh, we just want to keep it basic and keep it simple for now. Get out there and use the vehicle and then figure it out from there. There's, As I said, there's a whole lot of different products out there and a range of things you can do to these interiors, uh, but we just want to make sure that what we get is suits us and not just, uh, I guess, what is good marketing or what is uh, out there that uh, everyone seems to rave about. Uh, you can get armrests, we can get replacement steering wheels, you can do replacements for just about every component in here. But for now, we just want to get there out there and use the vehicle. Rightio, well that's a quick rundown of everything we've got planned for the 76. Leave us a comment below. What do you think of the upgrades we're doing? Uh, is, have you got any advice or tips for us? Anything that we've missed that you think we should be doing to the vehicle? As I said, like everyone else out there, we are on a limited budget and we did blow a massive whack of that budget on that J-Max uh, coil upgrade. Really excited to show you guys uh, not just the modification and the upgrade process of this 76, but then where we go with it and what we do with it. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm that bloody excited. I can't can hardly stand still. It's been it's been a dream of mine for so long to get this vehicle and to customise it and personalise it for exactly what we want. Uh, not just picking products out of a catalogue and not just doing what everyone else out there does, but taking little bits of what everyone else does uh, and some of our own ideas and building it into what we can si is consider to be the ultimate touring weapon. Uh, this is going to be a killer one, guys. Don't miss out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the videos we've got coming up soon and uh, hit that like button for us. It really helps us out. And as I said, leave us a comment. Let us know what would you like to see us do to the 76. I don't know where we'll be next week, but I do know there'll be a video next Sunday and we'll see you there. See you next Sunday, guys. Cheers. Join us next week as we get stuck straight into turning this Land Cruiser into our ultimate touring vehicle. You are not going to want to miss this. Can't wait to share it all with you guys. See you next Sunday.